Whether you turn to the left or the right, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way of the Lord, walk in it. Welcome to worship in First Oma Gathering Place. It's lovely to have you join with us, whether you're watching online or listening on the phone line. I have a, a number of announcements to make. The first is in relation to our Zoom prayer meeting. We are continuing to meet uh, by Zoom on Sunday evenings at seven o'clock uh, to pray for our congregation, our country and our world at this time. If that's something that you feel you would be able to do to join us, then please do so. The de joining details will be posted on our Facebook page or you can contact me directly for them. Also, if you're not able to join us um, on Zoom, then please set aside some time this evening um, or this afternoon uh, to pray for our congregation, our country and our world, uh, as the Lord calls us uh, to bring our prayers and petitions uh, before him. And we know that he will answer in accordance with his good and his perfect will. Sadly, I have to announce the death of Mrs. Barbara Duncan, who passed away last Saturday. The 9th of January and her funeral service took place on Tuesday. Uh, please remember the extended Duncan and, Ann, and Alan families in your thoughts and prayers in these days. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you are the God of our past, the God of our present and the God of our future. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you, whatever situation or circumstance we find ourselves in. We give thanks that you are faithful, loving and true. We also rejoice, O Lord, in your justice and in your righteousness and in your mercy. We ask, O Lord, that you would be present with us by the power of your spirit as we gather together to worship you. Um, over the internet and on the phone line. We thank you, Lord, that you are present in every part of this world, for it is your creation. And we thank you, Lord, for the tremendous privilege it is to come before you in prayer, to lift our voices in praise, and to study and to learn from your word. And so we pray, O Lord, that you would be present with us, inspire our hearts, encourage us in service, and equip us, O Lord, for all that today and tomorrow and the weeks and months ahead um, will, will require. We confess to you, O Lord, that we do not always trust you for the future, that we do not always depend upon you in the present, and that we often forget your faithfulness to us in the past. And so we ask, O Lord, that you would forgive us and that you would strengthen us in faith and give us courage uh, to love and follow you in these days. Lord, there are so many uh, changing situations uh, and decisions that we have to make in this world uh, today. And so we pray, O oh Lord, that you would give us your wisdom and your guidance as we make those decisions and that uh, we will choose to follow you, uh, to show your love and your kindness and your goodness to others. And that in our walk, we will be faithful to you, uh, revealing your glory and your honour and your power to those around. These prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In a moment, uh, Chris and Margaret are going to lead us in the hymn, Jesus Loves Even Me. And after that, uh, Keith Allison is going to read for us from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 14 to 22. Let us listen to Margaret and Chris, accompanied by David as they sing, Jesus loves even me.
This is what the Lord says, You Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians and the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea a path through the mighty waters, who drew the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am a making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honour me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I form for myself, and they may proclaim my praise. Yet you have not called on me, Jacob. You have not weighed yourselves for me, Israel. New Year and New Ways Often at this time of the year, uh, we evaluate our lives and maybe make some decisions about new ways of doing things, um, of new opportunities to take um, and new decisions to make. This time last year in 2020, I was making the decision to purchase an apartment in Belfast. It was new to me um, and uh, no sooner had I the keys of that apartment in Belfast than the first coronavirus lockdown hit us. And uh, so although I got the keys in early February, March, I wasn't able to visit the apartment again until July. So the plans that I had made uh, for the renovations that I wanted to, to carry out in the apartment were put on hold. I'm glad to report that progress is now being made on that uh, and hopefully the apartment will be ready for me in the spring time of 2021, God willing. But often in life when we make uh, decisions, um, other things can come uh, at us uh, from out of nowhere and we're left wondering which is the right option to take. Should we go this way? Should we go that way? And often in those decisions in life, whether it's a personal situation, a family situation, a work situation, a church situation, a community situation, uh, I turn to the verse uh, that I opened the service with and the verse that's actually on the uh, poster behind me, which says, whether you turn to the left or the right, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way of the Lord, walk in it. And so often the decisions that we have to make in life and the ways that we choose to follow can either, they're neither really wrong or uh, clearly right. Um, and so which way should we go? And uh, the advice that we get there from Isaiah chapter 30 is that we should walk in the ways of the Lord. We should make our decisions based on the ways of the Lord. And as Christians, we do that based on Jesus' way. And Jesus summed up uh, the commandments for us when he said that we are to love God and to love one another. So when we're making our decisions, uh, that we have to see, does this fall in line uh, with loving God and loving others? Is it honouring to God and is it showing care and compassion to other people? 
And if the answer to that is yes, then that helps us to make the decision uh, to move forward. And sometimes we are faced with dilemmas and decisions that are so complex and difficult. And the people of Israel find that um, in Isaiah's time. They were in exile in Babylon, uh, removed from all that they knew uh, that was familiar and true, removed from God's promised land, wondering would they ever find the way back uh, to that land that God had promised them and to, to his blessing. And so in the midst of their difficulty and struggle, uh, the Lord sent a word to them through the prophet Isaiah. And Keith read that for us earlier in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 14 to 22. And there we are reminded of four things. The first is that the Lord is sovereign. The Lord reminds the Israelite people that he is their God, that he is the Holy One, that he is the king over all of creation and he has the power over all nations and all powers. Yes, the Babylonians had carried them off into captivity. They were carried into captivity because of their sinfulness and God used the Babylonians to achieve that. But the Babylonians were still under the authority of Almighty God and he could and he would bring their reign to an end because he alone is sovereign over all the earth. And so the Israelites were reminded of God's sovereignty. They were also reminded of his faithfulness. The prophet Isaiah reminded them of their first exodus from Egypt. When they were leaving Egypt to go to the promised land, they were going through the desert and suddenly they came across the ocean and behind them the Egyptians were in pursuit. The way ahead was impossible, the way behind was even more terrifying. What were they to do? And the Lord answered and he opened up a way for them. He parted the waters of the Red Sea and the children of Israel passed through it to safety on the other side. The Lord performed a miracle and provided a way for his people because of his faithfulness and his love. And so the Israelites in captivity in Babylon were reminded of the faithfulness of God, of the way in which he had rescued them from captivity before and brought them to the promised land. And it's good to remember those days, to look back and to remember the faithfulness of God and to trust in him for his deliverance and for the future that he has planned for us. So Isaiah reminded the people of the sovereignty of God and he reminded the people of the faithfulness of God. And maybe if you had been an Israelite sitting listening to this, you might think, oh great, that's great. God's going to do the same thing again. He's going to do the same thing again. We know it. We've seen it before. We've heard it before. We've passed it on from generation to generation. God's going to do exactly the same thing this time for us. Well, not quite. Because Isaiah's prophecy continues. And it reminds us of the creativity of our God. He doesn't just repeat things from the past, but he responds in new ways to each individual situation and circumstance. Because he has control over all things. And so instead of parting the oceans, Isaiah tells the people that the Lord is going to bring water into the desert. Can you see the comparison? The waters were parted in the past. This time the dry desert will be flooded with water, with new life, with hope, with refreshment for the children of Israel. The Lord was going to do a new thing. He wouldn't just repeat what had happened in the past, but he would do a new thing in order to save and deliver his people. And so we are not to be uh, think that we can predict what God is going to do in our lives. 
but to be open to his unpredictability, but to trust in his sovereignty and to trust in his faithfulness for our today and for our tomorrow, for he is doing a new thing. And so we are called uh, to respond to that and to look to the ways in which the Lord is at work in our world and in our situation today. To know that he will always uh, be our redeemer and our saviour and that he will lead us through our difficulties and our trials. And so the Babylonian army uh, did come to an end. The empire fell. Uh, the Israelites returned to the promised land. And yet they were still under the authority of a foreign ruler. But they looked forward to that day when the Lord would do a new thing and bring them deliverance. And that new thing came in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. But he wasn't that great king like David, as they had expected. Again, our unpredictable God revealed his ways to us in new ways, through a saviour who was willing to be the servant of all and to die on the cross at Calvary, to be mocked and ridiculed, and yet ultimately to win deliverance and salvation for all who trust in him. So the children of Israel were reminded by the prophet Isaiah of God's sovereignty, of God's faithfulness, of God's amazing ability to do the miraculous and to provide deliverance and salvation and redemption. And we as Christians know that that has been ultimately fulfilled in the salvation that is offered uh, through Jesus Christ. So what can we learn from the lessons um, that we can see in Isaiah 43 from the words of the Lord. Well, first of all, we learn to turn back to God, to return to him, just as the children of Israel returned to him and looked to him for their salvation. So we are to do the same, to turn to the Lord, to seek his help, to seek his guidance, and to know that he will lead us forward in his ways. We're also called to praise him. The children of Israel were called to praise the Lord, to give thanks for all that he had done for them. And so we are called to do the same, to praise the Lord, even in the midst of these difficulties. And we know that old, well, not everybody may be watching, but many people watching will know that old Boney M song by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept. There was a song, a song of lament, uh, that those in captivity sang to the Lord. But as they praised the Lord, they were reminded of God's faithfulness and his goodness and his salvation. And so we do the same today in church as we gather online. But we can do it all the time in every situation and circumstance we find ourselves in. We can bring our praise to God through our prayers and through our songs, uh, reminding ourselves of his goodness and his faithfulness. And as we do that, that gives us uh, courage and faith uh, to move forward. So we are to turn to God, we are to praise God, and then we are to trust him to provide for our future, to do the new thing, to do the miracle, for he is the God of miracles and he will show us the way. So we are to look at the ways in which the Lord is at work around us. Look for the signs uh, of the waters bubbling up in the desert. Look for the miraculous ways in which he parts the sea. Uh, be always open to seeing where God is at work and following him in his ways. Uh, one of the commentators from uh, some of the books that I was looking at says that we are called to look beyond the darkness of our todays, to catch a vision of the bright sunshine of God's promised tomorrow. We are to look beyond the darkness of our todays, to catch a vision of the bright sunshine of God's promised tomorrows. The Lord has been faithful to us in the past. He is faithful to us in the present and he will be faithful to us in the future. We are to look for him and look for the signs of him at work in the world and to follow his new ways 
singing our praises to God and trusting in him as he leads us in the way ahead. Let us come before our great and powerful God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, in these days of continuing darkness and sadness and sorrow, we pray that we may have the faith to turn to you, to trust in you, and to look for signs of your work in our world. Help us, O oh Lord, to look for the bright rays of your sunshine, of your love, of your compassion, of your leading and of your guidance, and as we see your ways, to respond in faithfulness and trust to you. We bring before you, O oh Lord, once again, our world and our nation and our community and our families and our church and our individual lives, which continue to be impacted by the coronavirus pandemic and all its restrictions. So we pray, Lord, that in the darkness of these days, we would see your light and respond to your goodness and to your mercy and to your truth. We pray, Lord, for families who are facing uh, the sorrow of separation from a loved one, whether through death or through illness or hospitalisation or in nursing homes. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would replenish and refresh their thirsty souls with your goodness and with your hope for a brighter tomorrow. And we pray for those who are darkened uh, world because of anxiety or fear for the future. So we ask, O oh Lord, that they would be reminded of your faithfulness and your goodness to your people, that as they look to the past, they would have courage for the present and hope for the future. And we thank, Lord, of those who do not know you. And so we pray, O oh Lord, that in the darkest of these days of pandemic, that your people, men and women and children who seek to follow the Jesus way, would be lights shining in the darkness, calling people to a loving, saving relationship with the Lord Jesus, who died and embraced all the pain and suffering in this world to offer all a bright tomorrow. So help us, Lord, as Christians, as we walk in Jesus' way, to shine the light for Jesus, that others may know his love, his mercy and his goodness in their lives. We remember too, O oh Lord, uh, the impact of uh, the coronavirus on the wider world, um, upon those who are suffering in poverty or in war situations or in political upheaval. And we pray, O oh Lord, that they would receive peace, that they would receive justice, that they would be released from captivity, that they would be restored and refreshed. We thank you for all who are working in our aid agencies across the world, seeking to eradicate uh, poverty and injustice. Grant them, O oh Lord, a vision for the future and bright hope for tomorrow. These prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. We bring our service of worship to a close uh, with a new hymn, probably to most of you. It's entitled Waymaker. May it be our song of praise as we remember God's faithfulness and as we trust him for today and for tomorrow. Thank you. 
and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.